folks. Welcome to another Triple T Thursday. For those just joining us, that's Tools, Tips, and Talk, where we'll discuss info for the knife maker. In today's episode, we continue our Damascus series, and this time we're getting into Canister Damascus. I'm really excited about this episode because we're going to try a technique I've been wanting to try for months. So let's go down to the table, talk about Canister Damascus, and I'll tell you what we're going to do. So let's talk about canister. So obviously canister Damascus is when you're going to just take some kind of container. Uh, it can be a tall canister like this, or it can be a canister with the top cut out, commonly referred to as canoe. But you're going to take something like this, fill it full of something. Could be ball bearings, could be chain, um, whatever. Whatever you want to put in here. And then you're going to fill it with some powder, powdered steel. This is 1095 powder. Uh, this is 1095, and I've added 4% pure nickel, um, essentially making very similar to 15 and 20. Uh, and you can buy this stuff pre-mixed, and uh, Maritime Knife Supply has this stuff in stock. So uh, if you need powdered steel, go get some. So that is a typical canister. Uh, construction, put stuff in it and uh, and fill it. Um, what's starting to become more popular is to have to somehow create a pattern in the steel and put a mold in here and then fill that mold with different powders. The problem is what do you make that little pattern with? Some people take they take really thin steel and they bend it and it's really complicated uh, a really new method is to get a 3D printer and use PLA. Uh, I forget what PLA stands for. I'll put it down in the corner. Uh, but PLA is basically plant-based, which means um, it's, it's basically going to burn off in the forge. So what I've done, and I'll show you the video up here, is 3D print my logo. So what we're going to do is put this inside the canister. We're going to fill the shark with the 15 and 20 powder, the 4% nickel powder. And then around it, we're going to put the 1095 powder. And then we're going to compress it. And we should have a shark in the middle. And then this PLA material is just going to burn off. So very excited about this. The cool thing is, of course, you can 3D print anything. Um, obviously you need a container of sorts to fill it you need to be able to fill the actual thing with powder so tiny little things are hard to fill. Uh, this is the first one I did. Uh, obviously it was too big and it was really just me testing out the printer. <coughs> but um, yeah, this one uh, uh, should be easy to fill and go in there. So let's talk a bit more about canister. Uh, one of the issues that always comes up is how do you get the canister off? So there's really four or five ways. The first way is you just let it forge weld to the center and you grind it off. Uh, that's not much fun. The second method is using liquid paper, um, correction fluid, the white stuff you used to see. Uh, I don't have any on hand here. Uh, you would coat the inside and then let it dry naturally. If you try to heat it, it'll crack and bubble. And honestly, there's mixed results. I think the liquid paper is a waste of time. It's not very effective. Uh, the next way is, and, and liquid paper is aluminum oxide. That's what gives it that white color. If you buy white spray paint, white spray paint is aluminum oxide so spray paint dries almost instantly so you're much better off getting just some white spray paint if you want to go that route uh, the next two methods are one you can take stainless steel foil because stainless steel will not really stick to uh, carbon steel very well so you can line the con container with uh, stainless steel foil that makes it very easy to get off or my preferred method, use a stainless steel can. And that's what this is. This, can, this, this tube is stainless steel tube. Uh, this has gone in the forge. I think I used it for um, uh, doing heat treating on something, which is why it's all messed up, which is fine. And I know it won't stick. 
So just a um, message, ju just a note about the end caps here. Um, make sure you inset the end cap. Okay, don't just tack it on the top or tack it on the bottom because as soon as you press it'll just pop off. So inset it and weld it really well around uh, the outside so you can see it's, it's in a little bit. That way when you press down um, it's not just going to pop out. So I've done this so we can slide this inside and I can still put our cap inset in it and we're going to weld it down. All right, let's get this filled full of powder. We'll get it in the forge and we'll do a little pressing. I decided it would be easiest just to put the mold in this glass dish so that I wouldn't lose any of the powder that fell out and then just move the whole thing. That worked out really well. After that, I just filled the outside with the 1095 powder and then you have to vibrate it just to get it all to settle and then add a little more. So this worked out really easy. So now it's time to put some end caps on this uh, piece of stainless tube. Uh, for that, we're going to be just cutting them out of these, uh, these scraps here. Uh, and I thought this would be a good opportunity to try these blades that Graf just sent me. Um, so I agreed that I would give these a shot. Uh, instead of abrasive blades, these are diamond cutting blades for angle grinders. So we're going to throw one of these on and see how it does. And we're going to do just a couple comparisons because I'm going to put an abrasive wheel on and I want to compare how fast these cut, how clean they cut compared to abrasive wheels. So let's go check that out. They also sent me some of these wood cutting blades. So uh, I'm going to slice up a couple of pieces of wood just to give these a shot as well. So first thing, I'm going to make a cut into this thing the same distance. First I'm going to try with the abrasive wheel, then I'm going to try it with the diamond wheel. And uh, I'm going to leave this in real time so you guys see how long it takes me. Okay, that was the abrasive wheel, um, seemed to do okay. Let's switch it out. Okay, so I got it switched out. Let's give it a shot right beside there and see how we do. All right, so it definitely took a little longer. Um, there's no denying that. It probably took, mm, I'll have to look at the footage, but I'm guessing it took about twice as long. So that's not so fun. Uh, the one really cool aspect of these is that the disc doesn't get smaller. <laughs> and that's one annoying thing about, uh, about the abrasive disc. As you use them, the discs get smaller and then the cuts don't go as deep and generally a pain in the butt. So I'm going to make a few more cuts with this and just see how I feel about it. So when it uh, gives up in speed, it has some other good qualities to it. Um, there's definitely much less smoke in the air, uh, which I really like. Uh, not having to, you know, ventilate this area that much. Um, it kicks off just as much, um, well, probably a little less um, of the um, crap coming off of it because you're not getting the, the disc, the stuff coming off of the disc. But um, as far as uh, like the kind of cut, it, um, it's just as clean, if not a little cleaner, than, uh, than a, a standard abrasive wheel cut. 
So, yeah, I, I like it. Uh, would I use them all the time? Maybe. Uh, it depends. Uh, if I'm in a hurry, <laughs> maybe I want the regular abrasive disc, but uh, certainly cost-wise, uh, abrasive discs are pricey because you go through them so quick. When I was building my forge, I was going through abrasive discs like crazy. Had I had one of these, I probably could have done the whole thing on one disc. So, bang for the buck, the, uh, the diamond blades are certainly worth it. Okay, I've got one of these discs uh, for wood set up in here. Uh, one thing to make sure of, which you don't normally have to think about with the abrasive discs, is direction. Here you got to make sure the teeth are going in the right direction. I expect this is going to just tear through wood uh, with the speed of an angle grinder, but let's take a look. Yeah, that was real time, folks. Uh, this stuff just chews through wood. Like, this makes a, a table saw look like a toy. So, uh, be careful when you're using this thing, but uh, I'm going to go through a couple of more times. Uh, this thing cuts so fast, it's a little scary. <laughs> but uh, if you're looking to cut wood fast, this is a ripper. Um, and, it's, and it's so fast, it's not even tearing the sides. I don't have any tearing uh, of the blade because it's just so fast. So uh, pretty cool. I don't personally have a ton of use for the wood blades, but um, maybe, maybe I will in the future. But um, pretty cool. So overall, I really like these blades. Uh, I think the, uh, the diamond edge blades certainly, um, again, bang for the buck. Yeah, it's a little bit slower, but um, saving money to do those cuts is really, really great. So uh, uh, it says extra long life. I'll see. I'm going to keep using the blade that I have on there um, and see how long it gets. So I'll do an update uh, in a little while. But uh, so far, it doesn't look like it's wearing at all and uh, going really well. Um, I'm going to end up giving these blades away to my Patreon members. So if you're a Patreon member, go check it out. You just might win. If you're interested in getting some of these blades for yourself, there'll be links down in the description. So go check them out. The most important and the easiest thing to screw up in a canister is not letting it heat up long enough. I always say heat it up till you think it's ready and then leave it for another 10 minutes. You need to make sure you're at forge welding temperatures all the way through this billet. Here I'm starting with squaring dies so I can apply pressure in four directions all at the same time. Now it's a matter of lightly pressing each side and then turning it 9 degrees and keep going. You don't want to be too aggressive here or you'll start to crack the internal powder. You can see as I press each side it's bulging up the others. That's because the can is bulging. So we know the can is not sticking to the contents at least. The one problem that you're going to see soon is that I use Miles Steel as the end caps and those end up welding to the interior of the billet. This makes it much harder to get the can off, you'll see soon. Normally when I do this, the can just slides right off, but because the end cap is welded to the contents, it wasn't so easy. When I finally realize the problem, I end up just grinding off the cap and it comes right off. Even with this little issue, it only took me about 5 minutes to get the can off. That's how it's supposed to work. And now we're going to keep compressing this billet. This is the point where you still need to be really careful. 
powdered steel cracks really easy, so you need to go easy on the presses. We're going to be four-weighing this billet, so I have multiple sharks down the blade instead of just one big shark. Of course, we're going to have to tile it to get our sharks to appear on the side of the blade. You can see I've got three quarter inch kiss blocks here to get the billet nice and even. Then we're going to slice it up into four and then restack it. We're using the long dies just to get this nice and flat. Here's the billet, four weighed and already welded up. We're going to forge weld it back together, stretch it out a little bit before we start slicing it up. So here we are after the four way. Uh, now I've already sliced them up on the bandsaw. Now we're ready to tile them something like this and put that one something like that. We'll put some sacrificial steel over them after we grind the edges and we'll do our last weld. We've got this nice and hot, ready to forge weld and compress all our tiles together into one billet. Those slices were about a half inch thick, so now we're reducing it down to a quarter. Now just a quick run in the rolling mill, just to get it all the same thickness. I've ground the edges, now we're taking it to the surface grinder to grind off all that sacrificial steel. So here's the final billet. Came out pretty cool. All the sharks on the top look really, really good. There's a little splotch here uh, and here. And remember, these when these were stacked, this one was actually on top of this one. So there must have been some little issue in this one where some of the uh, the nickel powdered steel kind of came out so the lesson learned here is to make the uh, the mold just a little bit thicker uh, when you print it which I was a little bit worried about but we'll we'll know for next time um, but I think I definitely achieved what I was trying to do here the uh, the sharks look really cool the top ones just look amazing just these guys um, look really really good so in a future build we're going to be taking this pattern and putting it on top of here and making a knife out of it so stay tuned for that thanks for joining me on this you can definitely see the the possibilities here of uh, 3d printing something and uh, just making it look really cool you can do some really cool shapes okay let's see who won the grinding discs I've got all my Patreon members entered here. Gold members get a double entry. Let's see who won. And remember, folks, I'm never going to respond in comments. If you ever see a comment seeing you, saying you won something, it's a scam. I will always email you. Let's see who won. If you're interested in becoming a Patreon member, there's links down in every video description and on my website. Go check it out. Barry Hammond, congrats. I'll be reaching out to you, Barry, let you know you won. Thanks for joining me, folks. We'll see you on the next one.